What's up guys? Welcome to Anime Kahai. If you'd like to help me out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. If people believed they created it, then they'll take care of it themselves? I mean, was that even my original intention? I felt like I had said something along those lines, but I didn't think it was that big of a takeaway. Starting with the premise that it would succeed was also a little daunting. I see. If you control the economy and guarantee security for free, the weak will undoubtedly depend on you. A society in which everything is decided by a bloodless war, maybe it is even better than what the Rossos had in mind. Guy nodded to himself, as if he now saw Diablo in a more positive light. Of course, it will be a world where many are happy, rather than an elite wealthy few. The supply and demand created there will produce new possibilities. That's Rimuru Sama's wish, Guy. Welp, he isn't wrong. What I was looking forward to, was the improvement of cultural life. Movies, music, comics, and novels, I wanted to see more entertainment available for the masses to enjoy. In order to create such art, possessing a stable livelihood was essential. I wished to help people lead fulfilling lives so that new hidden talents could be discovered. With that being said, I haven't given it much thought beyond that. Meaning, once you experience and appreciate a blessed period of peace, you will be afraid to lose it? That's right. If I had to sum it all up in one word, it'd be the concept of gratitude. People would thank Rimuru Sama for protecting their peace, and therefore become cooperative for the sake of maintaining world stability. I believe it is more effective than your idea of control through fear. The next thing I knew, Diablo and Guy were nodding together as if they had understood one another. After listening to Diablo's conjecture about the future, Ruminas and Leon, and even their subordinates, looked at me, seemingly impressed. I couldn't exactly reveal that this whole thing wasn't actually my original intention in this serious atmosphere. However, it'll require a long-term outlook and careful calculation to put that into practice, won't it? If you don't manage it well, I can picture the number of people growing out of control. Could you look after and handle that many? Oi oi, they aren't exactly pets you need to take care of. Don't phrase it as if they're some Japanese rice fish pets that are getting overpopulated inside a fish tank. Hmm, are you implying that Rimuru Sama cannot see that far into the future? That may be an arduous task for you, but it's nothing Rimuru Sama can't handle in his spare time. So, allow me to inform you that there is no need to worry. Oi, why are you already assuming that I will manage it? To be honest, I believe I once told Diablo that it would just be like the demon lords who controlled the world from behind the scenes. If I said that in front of Gi and the others, they'd probably be annoyed. Though I was concerned, it turned out that my worries were unfounded. Rather, it was. I see. Well, I'll leave it up to you. I'm not too optimistic, but I have nothing at stake if you fail. The only thing left for me to do then is to weed out those stupid idiots with my own hands. Let's see how you handle your responsibilities. Gi commented with a surprising grin. Having been forewarned, all I could do was prepare myself for the worst. Since I had nodded in agreement with him earlier, I couldn't really say no now. Diablo exaggerated a tad, but he is, for the most part, not wrong. It's a bit idealistic, but I do hope that will happen one day. Even if you hadn't said anything, I aim to achieve world peace my own way. I promised Guy. Thus, before I could fully process what was going on, the Octogram had officially entrusted me with the management of the Western nations. Well then, it would have been nice to end the meeting on that pleasant note, but there were still other problems. Rimuru, I'll give you a small piece of advice. John, or Carrera, has a violent temper and a penchant for unleashing nuclear magic whenever she feels like it. If you don't keep a tight rein on her, this precious capital will be reduced to ashes. Warned Leon. Following that little bit of news, Ruminas also shared her insight. That's right. Let me add another thing. As I mentioned earlier, the Violet that I know of is gloomy and malicious. She is a being synonymous with inhumanity. Unlike monster kind, she does not seem to have any intention of eradicating the human race. On the other hand, she has a very fickle and volatile personality. Although she appears to be acting as a cheerful little girl in front of you, I suggest you keep your guard up. Yep, they both revealed something rather unsettling. What's more, even though it was never directly mentioned, it seemed that Testarossa was more troublesome than those two. This became a problem. No, it wasn't appropriate to say it became one. To be precise, I finally came to the realization that this whole situation was a massive headache. Now that I knew the three demonesses were actually primordial demons, I had to take charge of them. If something went wrong, then I would be held accountable for their actions. Despite the fact that they were supposed to be Diablo's subordinates, that excuse wouldn't fly. I had already promised Elmija San that I would take responsibility, so it was too late for me to refuse. I wanted to punch my naive self for not knowing what I was really getting into, 
but I guess I had to suffer the consequences for being such a carefree person at that time. Compared to managing human society, this one seemed to be a bigger pain in the ass. The thought made me depressed, and I let out a mental sigh. Once Guy finished talking, Ramirez, Dino, and Veldora stood up, as if on cue. Well, it seems like we're just bothering you guys, so I'll leave the rest to you. Right. I also have something important to do. Vesta San is waiting for me, so I'll see you later, Guy. Then, I should return to guard the labyrinth. Ah, busy, busy. <laughs> Noting their well-rehearsed choreography, it wasn't hard to figure out that they were planning to escape. Dino, in particular, was evidently tired of having the proverbial finger pointed at him, and thus made his announcement without even a shred of sincerity. Huh? Guy retorted, and unable to let it go that easily, took another jab. You working? What a sorry excuse for a joke. No, no, it's the truth. Came the reply, but instead of Dino, it was actually from Ramirez. You see, Dino is also helping out as my assistant. That bit of news came as a genuine shock to Guy. Dismissing whatever came from Dino's mouth was one thing, but when even Ramirez backed up his claim, Guy was left with no choice but to believe him. Dino is working? Really? Rimuru, just what kind of magic did you use? Guy's astonishment was directed at me this time, but I also struggled to come up with an answer myself. I don't know either. In our country, we have a simple rule. If you do not work, then you do not eat. He was no exception. That's all. No magic involved. I would have had a much easier time if that kind of convenient magic was at my disposal. Thankfully, I somehow managed to get my point across to Guy since he didn't push the subject any further. Ramirez and the other two had hastily retreated from the room. Their impeccable timing was hardly a surprise, given how they had already polished off all the tea and snacks Shuna had prepared. Geez, what upstanding guys. Well, fine. I thoroughly chewed Dino out this time, so maybe he'll finally put some effort into his reports now. Guy muttered quietly. As I'd mentioned, that kind of talk would be more appropriate if I weren't sitting right here. How was I supposed to deal with such a brazen admission of espionage? Well, I doubt Guy would have even listened if I'd told him. Plus, it was probably better to spin this in a positive light, we could be honest with our intentions. I decided to leave it at that and change the topic. So, did you come all this way just to ask about Testarossa and the other two? If that was all he wanted to do, then he would have left by now. And seeing how he was still here, there must have been something else on his mind. I wasn't particularly keen on inviting more problems, but if I hadn't asked, I wouldn't have found out. That was troubling me too, but the reason for my visit is different. Guy clarified, slumping back into his chair. His gaze wandered over everyone in the room and came to rest on Leon. I swung by after meeting these guys who call themselves the moderate clown troop. Oh? Aren't they the ones you've been making deals with? Guy asked. Yes. Leon replied. No, wait, wait. This is an important revelation, not something you can just gloss over. Hey. I interjected. So did you meet with Yuki, too? Yeah. Guy frankly responded to my question. I had recently ordered Soe to search the Freedom Association's headquarters and branches. I hesitated to think that Yuki had intended for yesterday's encounter, and so I figured he would show up in the Association headquarters, where he was based. Although he likely would have made efforts to reappear unnoticed, I cautioned Soe and his subordinates to keep an eye out for disguises and substitutes while they reconnoitered the location. I hadn't received any reports of movement as of yet. I also would have never guessed that Gi had encountered Yuki and his troop. Then, does that mean you were conspiring with Yuki? I ventured. What? Don't be stupid. Those bastards were trying to escape to the east, so I punished them a little. I was under the impression that Gi and Yuki were on the same side, but evidently, they weren't. That tidbit came as a relief to me, but it still didn't explain Gi's motive. So you didn't kill them? Inquired Leon. While that concerned me too, there was more beneath the surface. Did Yuki intend to abandon everything he had built up in the west and flee to the east? Like, I knew he was gutsy, but that was a terrifyingly bold decision to make. However, catching Guy's ire was definitely a stroke of bad luck for them. Since he said it was just a punishment, he probably didn't kill them. Still, they were undeniably given a serious beatdown. Well, I wasn't about to feel sorry for them. On the contrary, they had certainly deserved every bit of it. They didn't die. At first, I considered capturing them to sell you a favor. However, the situation changed. Guy explained, and went on to recount what happened when he encountered Yuki. As a result, a rough outline of Yuki's surreptitious behavior became clear. Yuki was the employer and the boss of the moderate clown troop. Well, this only proved that my, Raphael Sands, prediction was accurate. 
As for the numerous feats and misdeeds Yuki had carried out, first, he developed the Adventurer Mutual Aid Association into the Freedom Association. Second, he conspired with the Rosso family, who controlled the council, and handled clandestine work for them, which included brokering deals with Demon Lord Leon. Third, he backed Clayman as Demon Lord and was manipulating him from behind the scenes. Fourth, he crushed Echidna, the Mother of Darkness, which commanded the underworld of the East, and engineered the surreptitious organization named Cerberus. By day, he was the head of the Freedom Association, and by night, he led a secret society. This was the first time I'd heard of Echidna, and apparently, it was a considerably large, underground group. The information was authentic, since Leon was the one who provided it. By the way, the Orthrus slave trade that Masayuki allegedly destroyed was supposedly a subsidiary of Cerberus, so Yuki must have been involved with that. He was immensely gifted at destroying a pre-existing organization and seizing control. Although the strategy sounded pretty easy in theory, it was actually a Herculean task in practice. He had achieved all this within 10 years, which clearly placed him a cut above merely competent. It wouldn't even be an exaggeration to call him a genius. Despite Yuki's many talents, he still suffered setbacks that stemmed from his overconfident personality. A major flaw of his was that he would misjudge an opponent's strength. One look from Gi should have been enough for him to understand just how much trouble he was in. Fortunately for him, Gi decided to let him off the hook, so I suppose I could only commend his exceptional luck. Yet the fact that Yuki survived that encounter left me with mixed feelings. I wouldn't go so far as to wish death upon my fellow countrymen. At the same time, I couldn't forgive his actions, either. Yuki had the facade of a kind person, all the while secretly leading Leon and the Rosso family, which was headed by Granbell, around by their noses. Not only that, but he also employed the moderate clown troop to set Hanada up for a fight against me. His utmost goal was this childish dream, one of world domination, and I couldn't even laugh because of the implications. That's it for this video guys, thank you for always watching my videos, and supporting my channel. Shout out to the new members of Anime Kahai Sponsors, Day of Light, Dea Silly, Minotaur, Walter Obi, Jan M. Thank you so much guys for helping out. Shout out to the commenters, Kaneki Galias, Jan Franco Miguel Fernandez, Abhishek Pawar, him, and last but not least, shout out to Chad Vota. I'll see you guys in the next video.